All right, guys, 2022 bow setup. Uh, this is the Matthews V3X. I shoot this bow phenomenally. I've taken it on three hunts so far. I've killed a whitetail, javelina, a bunch of animals in Hawaii. I love this bow. I shoot it so well. So um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I'm running and the specs, and we'll be off to the races. So this is the V3X from Matthews, the 29. I like shorter bows uh, just for packability. I don't like packing bigger bows. I don't like the 33s. Uh, there's pros and cons to both, but I feel that the shorter bow is, is worth the trade-off to have a little bit more forgiving of a string angle in the backcountry. So I always go for the shorter bow, my personal uh, opinion. Yours may differ. So um, I have a, a stabilizer on here. This is a cutter stabilizer, 8-incher. I don't have a sidebar or anything like that. I like to keep my bow sleek. Uh, I like to keep them as light as possible because after you get all your components on them, they're heavy enough. They're heavy. Uh, what's cool about the V3X is the bridge lock and this low pro quiver. So I have this Montana black gold ascent. I got the dovetail. It slides right in there with this new Matthews low pro quiver and this bow it naturally, with that stab on there, wants to fall forward. There's no leaning left or, or right. Obviously, bows of the past, you know, theoretically tend to want to lean more to the right because of the quiver and the sight and all the components hanging off the right side of the bow. But with the bridge lock, you just, you don't get that. And so, uh, once again, simple eight inch stabilizer. Uh, one thing that I keep in mind when I select a stabilizer is I want a stabilizer that's going to protect my sight when I'm on a stock. Meaning I can set my limb pocket on the ground and my stabilizer on the ground and my sight is not going to hit the ground. So when I'm stocking, I can do that. If I'm crawling and I'm going like this, I want my sight protected. In my opinion, as a bow hunter, that's the biggest thing when it comes to a stabilizer for me. Uh, for most bow shots, uh, you don't need, you know, a heavy stabilizer, especially if you're shooting under 50 yards. That's my opinion, once again. Uh, I have this Matthews Ultra Rest Integrate. This goes uh, on the back of the riser. Once again, it's all in line via this Picatinny rail. Uh, the Integrate by QAD. I am a big cable-driven rest uh, with full containment fan. I don't like limb-driven rests because I don't like that extra string. That's something else that can get caught on something and break or get cut or pull my uh, rest out of time or cause a problem somewhere. Once again, my personal opinion, I like the shorter the cord, the better, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And so that's why I always run a cable driven rest. Uh, arrows, for the last 10 years, I've, I've really modified my arrow selection. I've shot from micro diameter arrows to the old standard size uh, arrow shafts uh, and even aluminum back before uh, carbon arrows came out. And there's pros and cons to all of them. I feel like nowadays the most important component in an arrow is the inserts, the accessories of the arrow. What I like about micro diameter arrows is usually you have a two piece insert. You have an insert that goes inside the carbon and then you have this oversert that goes on top of that and slides down over the carbon. That's going to give you a lot of protection, a lot of toughness up front. And on top of that, these micro sized arrows, micro diameter sized arrows, they have a thick carbon wall. They're going to be thicker than a standard size arrow carbon wall because they still need to maintain their stiffness and weight and the diameter is smaller, so you have to put that carbon somewhere. And so the smaller diameter, the thicker carbon wall that you need. And so that's why I also like a micro diameter arrow is because you got thick carbon. I don't like a lot of weight up front. Uh, I've got about 50 grains of insert up front. Uh, I, I don't like steel. Um, it's good for toughness, but I feel like a good uh, aluminum insert with an insert and the oversert is enough strength to do what it needs to do and protect the base of that broadhead. Um, once again, steel is superior because it's steel. It's way stronger. Uh, but I don't like that all that weight up front. Once again, personal preference.
Uh, this is a 430 grain arrow. This is what I'm going to run this year. It's a Vector ZMR. Uh, those, the guys over there, they, they built me this arrow to shoot this year. And I told them 430 grains. And it's a little bit lighter than what I'm used to or what I normally do. Uh, kind of bumping back 10 years ago, I was hunting with a 400 grain arrow and I went all the way up to a 560 grain arrow. And now I'm back down to a 430 grain arrow. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. The first one is I tend to like a flatter trajectory. I have a single pin slider. Uh, I always just run my sight on 30 yards. I keep my sight on 30 yards, 20 yards. I just ha have to hold two inches low, 40 yards. I need to hold six inches high. A lighter arrow is going to have that flatter trajectory, especially, you know, within 50. And that's going to make my life easier. Uh, I, don't, I just don't have the arc that I would have in a 560 grain arrow uh, that I shot just as recently as two years ago. Uh, so that's important to me when I'm shooting a single pin slider. Another big factor is broadhead accuracy. Even with helical veins, I found that I wasn't getting the accuracy that I demanded out of my setup at distance. This is 60 plus yards with a, a cut on contact, bigger blade, uh, broadhead, uh, plain and simple. I just felt like my, my groups were just opening up a little bit once I got out past 60. And a big part of that is too high of arrow speeds. Uh, that's over 300 feet per second is, is what I'm talking. I like to have my arrow within that 294 to 300 feet per second. You can, you can go too fast, absolutely. You can get sporadic arrow flights. Uh, but what I have found over a lot of testing is with these Evolution uh, Jekylls and the Hyde, they're a low profile broadhead and even at those higher speeds, I still get superior accuracy. So that was something that encouraged me to go back down a little bit lighter. Once again, 430 grains. Now this arrow comes out of this bow at 305 feet per second. That's, that's fast. And I did that for um, not only the flat trajectory, but it's a little harder for those axis deer or any deer or any animal to duck the string when that arrow's getting there faster. So that's just a little factor that I considered uh, with going with a lighter arrow. So these are just a few things uh, that I keep in mind when I select my bow setup. Uh, this is my, my weapon for the fall. I feel so confident with this. I have some kills under my belt already. And, and that's what it is to build that confidence, is that range time and then get out there and get hunting, get some harvest under your belt. You get that confidence and I feel better than ever going into the fall with this bow setup.